Hi everyone, this is going to be a quick tutorial on the 2022 GMC Yukon XLT, which is the uh, extended cargo version. Um, Yukon XL is what that was previously known as. Um, we have a Yukon XL, I think we have 61 as a Yukon XL. This would be officially number 64. We have two of these units. Uh, the other one is 63. They're the exact same model. So just to show you a few features here um, and for our dispatch team in Serbia to get more familiar with it as well. Okay, I just finished a ride. So you can see that there's some cleanup that needs to be done here. But um, as you can see, everything's really nice on the inside. Um, got the White stitching as uh, an accent. Um, again, 63 and 64 are the exact same units. You see the nice big panoramic, panoramic sunroof, um, as well as it's black on black. We haven't even taken the plastic off of this uh, monitor yet here. It's got the Google Map GPS system that's integrated in it, into it. Um, let's see, I'll just go around and show you a few features. You can see what it's like on the inside. Of course, this vehicle, as well as most of our other vehicles, all have captain's chairs. We won't be buying any vehicles without captain's chairs going forward. I think the only one that doesn't have captain's chairs... Well, actually, I think they all have captain's chairs now. So, uh, you can see, as again, I just finished doing a ride, so I'm just going to remove that car seat there. But these... Nice big area, uh, lots of room back here. These uh, easily fold down. And back in the back, you can see where um, we can, I'll show you how this automatically comes up in just a second. But if I just lift up here, you can see it gives you more access. If I needed to make it easy for somebody to get in there, if they didn't want to go around the captain's chair, they could do that. Or, Push this down, lift that up, and then of course you need to just flip that headset or headrest back up, flip the arm down, and then I'm going to just lift on this leather le lever here to slide it back. Give it a little bit more leg room here. Notice got plenty of room. Nice big spot, plenty of seating. These monitors rarely get used. I haven't even taken the plastic off of this yet. Um, they really don't get used that much. I mean, if a, a passenger did want to come in here, they could literally, maybe I'll do this. I'll turn it on in a second, but they can like triple tap on the screen, enter, hit the navigation button, enter the address that they want to go to. And then there's an option that will say send to driver and they would just flip it up, send it to the driver and it would put it on that front screen up there for the driver to be able to. Uh, then hit navigate and go to the location that they want to go. So again, I'll come around this other side. This whole console here will slide back to make it more convenient for the passenger so that this cup holder is right next to the passenger and they've got their controls a little bit closer. As you can see down here, they can turn on their seat warmer right here. So these captain's chairs but they will both guests in the back have the ability to do their captain's chairs. If they wanted to, they could bring their own media, plug in their iPhone or their Android device and just do screen share and watch their own content right here. Uh, they've got their heat controls back here and their, let's see, can they do radio back here? I'm not sure that they can do the radio. It doesn't look like it. Okay. But this whole thing will slide back. There's a button up there on that console. Uh, where the driver can slide this whole thing back to make it more convenient for the guest in the back. All right, so we'll go around to the other side. This happens to be 10. It's also in my garage right now. Got lots of spots on it. it needs to be cleaned up. And let's see, around the back, as you can see, nice big cargo area. These seats are really uh, nice because if you look right here on these buttons, all you have to do is... Let's see, the right side, you can see the right side is down. So I'm gonna come over here and push right side up and watch what happens. That seat just comes right back up. You don't have to be climbing into the cargo area to lift it up. Now, one thing it does not do 
is that head rest does manually need to be flipped back up. So either from the door as you're letting the passenger in, or you do have to lean forward here and lift it up. So there's that. And then of course, to go back down, you just come over here to this button, right side down, and it will just fold it down like that. Let's see, these other buttons. That must be for the next seat up. Okay, if I had some large stuff and I just wanted to put the, well, let's try this. I'm not 100% sure. What is this gonna do? I'm gonna push the top part here. Nope, let's see. Just the bottom, let's see what it does. Yep, it takes that whole seat down. Look at that, all the way up front. Okay, and then looks like I'd have to manually go back over here to lift that up. Okay, which I'll do, lift that up, let's uh, put the armrest down. That's good. I do want to lift up this handle here and slide it back like that. Okay, come around here to the back and we're good. I'm going to go ahead and lift that seat up. So I'm going to hit right side up. That will come up. I'm going to lean forward, flip this up. Okay, and I'm coming around the side. On the back of the tailgate here, I'm just going to hit this button and it'll automatically go down. Like that. Again, you can see this is the Yukon SLT model. I know it's dirty. I just got back from a ride. It needs to be cleaned up. It's uh, the weekend and had to help out early here in the morning. So you're gonna show this side. I'll just quickly, I had this down so I could get this car seat out. I think, let's see here. Yeah. Actually, I'm gonna leave that in for now. Who knows where it will be next. Sorry, I know that's shaky. Here we go. I'm gonna lift this up. Again, when I do that, and I wanna slide the seat back. And then fix that. Good to go, they got plenty of room. Show you a couple other things for the driver. Okay. Uh, features that they might wanna be aware of on this. All your controls are mostly left of the steering wheel. Uh, this is the park brake. I never use that. I suppose if you were on a steep hill and you were parking up in Park City somewhere or something, you might want to gauge that park brake. Um, but it's normally a park brake would be down here, right? And uh, you would engage it by pressing it and then release it by pressing it again in most other vehicles. But these newer GMCs don't have that. They have this park brake button here. Um, all of your four-wheel drive, four high, four low, Two-wheel drive, which would be normally what you'd use all summer long, unless it was rainy or looked like it could potentially be icy, then you'd put on auto. In the wintertime, the default probably should be auto if there's any water or wet or potentially slick roads at all. I'm usually in two-wheel drive if I know everything's dry, but anytime it looks wet or anything, I just go ahead and flip into auto. When you're climbing up White Pine Canyon Road or up into the colonies or these areas that are snow-packed and windy in Park City, I'd always just flip it into four, four high. And you can do that on the fly while you're driving. You just hit the button and it'll show you on the dash. A um, couple nice features. You got, oh, it's, it's upside down here, but you've got the seat, or sorry, the hand warmer here on the steering wheel. Of course, your cruise control stuff's right here. Uh, other controls that kind of nice. I guess you can adjust the steering wheel here. It's just, it's all automatic. And what else? Let's see here. 